Hallelujah. Good morning. Welcome one and all to the Potter's House Christian Church. Hallelujah. I want to start. We're going to worship God. Sing the song to Jesus. He knows my name. Hallelujah. So take some time. Amen. It's time for service. Glory to God. Lift your hands. Let's worship God and give him his due praise. Hallelujah. I have a maker. He has formed my heart. Lift your hands towards heaven and sing it with us. Hallelujah. I have a maker. He formed my heart. Before even time began, my
I call. Let's tell the Lord we love him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. Father, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. We want to take some time and pray. This morning, we want to believe God as uh, the keyboard plays softly. We want to take some time and lift up those in need of salvation. Amen. I ask that you pray for my family. Pray for my father, Lawrence Houston. I also want to pray for Alex Ocañas. If God would Touch this young man. Want to lift up Monica Guerra this morning. I want to pray for Derek Chauvin. This is the police officer responsible for the death of George Floyd. He needs Jesus. He needs to get saved. Now. We want to pray for healing. And I believe God for my, my in-laws, amen, my mother and my father, Jesse and Donna Camacho. And that God's hand will be upon my, my mom that she's uh, has neuropathy, that God would do a miracle. And my dad are recovering. Man, from a recent surgery, that God's hand will be upon him. I want to also pray for Gabrielle Rosas this morning. That God would bring healing. I went to pray for her yesterday. God would do a miracle even now. I want to lift up the Salazar family. I want to pray for James, for Johnny, for Jessica, that God would touch them. Uh, they recently tested positive. God's hand will be upon them this morning. I want to believe God for Daniel uh, Alejos. And, uh, he is also tested positive that God would bring healing, a speedy recovery in Jesus' name. I want to pray for little Choli. Amen. Uh, and that God would help him, that he would heal quickly pray for his mom, Emily. Amen. I want to pray for Luis Alejandro. I want to pray for the Ramirez family. So I want to lift up Enedina Hernandez. This is Ulysses' grandmother. God would bring healing. I also want to pray for Robert Tobias. This is Jessica's grandfather. God would do a miracle and bring healing this morning. There's some special prayers. We want to lift up the Guerra family. We want to pray for the Ortega family this morning. We want to pray for our sister, uh, Veronica Castellano. Also want to lift up Jamie Garza uh, this morning uh, and God would touch these precious people. Want to lift up the Portillo family. I want to pray for Kristen Suds, uh, Robert uh, 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 Gowans, uh, that God would touch him. He's recently diagnosed with colon cancer, that God would move. Uh, we cast out the spirit of death and we command resurrection life uh, in the name of Jesus. Also happy to bring you a report, Sister Joanne and told me she had been working with a young lady by the name of Anna Leal. Anna told her that her daughter Selena was prayed for uh, last week and today she's recovering very well. Thank God for that. Uh, she also told Joanne because uh, the church lifted, uh, uh, lifted her mom up in prayer that God did an overnight miracle. Uh, she's doing fine. Uh, they, they've yet to come to church, but God is already moving. Listen, uh, God moves when God's people pray. So we need to believe God for these precious people. Please uh, uh, remember to lift up the leaders of our nation, the leaders of our fellowship. We want to pray for all the first responders in our city. We also want to lift up all the essential workers, uh, everyone that has been cleared to go back to work, uh, that God's hand will be upon them and keep them, uh, that the citizens of our, of our, our city, amen, and even greater Houston, amen, that we would be covered with, uh, there be healing up uh, that this disease, uh, this virus uh, would go away by the grace of God. Uh, God's hand would be upon us. So let's take some time and pray. I understand uh, uh, there's there's many other prayer requests. Uh, we encourage you, please go to PasadenaCFM.com. Give us your prayer request. We will lift you up in prayer. We believe God. God's going to move. Uh, and, and if God moves on your behalf, 
If God does answer a prayer or he's answering a prayer, we want to know about that too. Amen. Let's be encouraged together. And so we want to believe God. And so let's take some time and go before the Lord in prayer right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. And I ask you, Lord God, that you would move. God, you'd bring healing and salvation and deliverance by the grace of God. Heavenly Father, we bind every untoward spirit. We ask you, Lord God, to move right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we trust you, God, that you would set our families free, God. We trust you, Lord Jesus, that you would bring healing and do powerful miracles, God. You are a miracle-working God, and we put our faith and our trust and our confidence in you, Lord Jesus. And we always make mention of your name. Father, I trust you, Lord God, to bring up straight deliverance, God. I pray that it is, uh, Lord God, it can't be explained. Uh, we'll just give you glory. Uh, God, the people will come out of hospitals. Uh, Father, I pray that you would restore, uh, Lord God, life uh, and that life more abundantly by the grace of God. Touch our families, God, and our church. Uh, minister to our nation. Uh, our fellowship, cover our mother church even now. Leaders of our fellowship by the grace of God. Our military, God, your hand would be upon them. Uh, surround our president with wise counsel. Uh, Father, I pray, cover us in the blood of all of the political upheaval, of all of the civil and social unrest. I pray the blood of Jesus shake the foundations, I pray, by the grace of God. Do a miracle, Lord God. We give you the glory this morning, and we praise you because you are good and your mercy endure forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so much for letting me pray for you glory to god it's good to be in the house of god welcome one and all to the potter's house christian church as we are streaming amen live on facebook as well as youtube this morning uh, uh, that god's hand will be upon you and your family uh, that you would walk in blessing amen and if you are not saved that you would walk in conviction and the goodness of god would lead you to the cross amen so uh just have a few announcements if we can uh, if i can have your attention just for a few moments amen first off we do have service this evening at 6 p.m. We will be uh, streaming today uh, online. We encourage you to tune in tonight uh, that God would help you. God would speak to your heart. Uh, hallelujah. I also want to let you let you know that um, uh, the, the water baptism class and the water baptism, amen, has been postponed until further notice. Uh, and so just uh, be patient with us, those of you that signed up for that. If you haven't signed up and you're interested in doing so, please let me know. Amen. I'll include your name in the list. And when that time comes, we'll take care of that. Glory to God. Tonight, amen, I'm following the evening service this evening, amen, uh, we're going to start our fellowship fast uh, and prayer vigil. Hallelujah. Uh, tomorrow night, as well as Tuesday night, the church building will be open at 730. You can come and pray. Social distancing is very easy here. You can come and pray with us, worship with us. Uh, glory to God. We encourage you uh, to come join us and fast with us as we believe God for our fellowship. And we believe God for what God wants to do. Hallelujah. Also, uh, right after the fellowship uh, fast, it ends uh, uh, July the 1st, amen, July the 2nd through the 22nd, we will enter another fast. It is our Daniel fast. We did it in January. We're going to do it again, amen, in July. We're believing God, glory to God. Uh, please bear with me as I uh, come up with a strategy uh, for the meetings uh, uh, during the time of the fast. There's been some, uh, some different things that uh, come down the pipe. Uh, as far as city regulations and so uh, we want to be obedient to the best of our ability to that and so uh, I, I believe if they have not issued it yet that, uh, that they're going to a stay at home order uh, is issued and if it is issued already or it's going to be then I will let you know as to how we're going to approach uh, uh, these meetings during the time of the Daniel fast so please uh, be patient uh, and, and work with us we, we thank God amen uh, so far, the the uh, revival uh, with, with Sho Kishimoto is still on. Hallelujah. This is July the 19th of, uh, through the 22nd. We want to believe God. God's hand will be upon that revival. We've been passing out flyers uh, and getting the word out around town. And so uh, pray for that revival. Uh, uh, we're believing God for tremendous things. Amen. Uh, the Bible conference has been moved uh, to October, October the 5th through the 9th. If you can adjust them and you can... Uh, 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 clear your schedule for that week. I really encourage you to do so. For those of you that cannot make it to, to the Chandler Conference, uh, uh, maybe you can't fly or, or, or finances, whatever the case may be, amen. Around that time, 
is the San Antonio Conference. Amen. Get on I-10 and head west. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, uh, that, that, that conference uh, is just as powerful. Glory to God. Uh, Pastor Ruby hosts that at the Door Christian Church. Amen. Uh, at the uh, 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 Southwest Loop of 410 in San Antonio. I really encourage you, if you can't make it to Chandler, then please go to San Antonio, amen. Catch some nights, do what you need to do. We need conference, we need to hear from our leaders. Praise God. So pray for these conferences, uh, that God would move in Chandler and God would move uh, in San Antonio, as well as Prescott. Uh, the Prescott Bible Conference uh, is also happening uh, this month in July. So praise God. And as promised, uh, uh, audiences out there, whether you belong to our church or not, uh, I'm here to make a uh, quick announcement. I'll move through it as quickly as I can uh, because July the 1st, which is next Wednesday, the church will reopen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So this is our target day. So that evening, we have a time of prayer at 630. We have our Sunday evening, uh, excuse me, Wednesday evening service at 730. Having said that, uh, we will be reopening under special circumstances, and I want to lay them out to you uh, right now. Amen. First of all, if you are sick at all, we want you to stay home and get the proper rest and treatment that you need. The same is true for your children. Amen. If you have recently been exposed to anyone who has the coronavirus, uh, then we need you to stay home and enjoy the service online. All the services will be streamed for your convenience. If you are able to attend our service, meaning that you are not sick nor have any symptoms, then you are allowed to come. You will be required to wear a mask at all times. You will also be required to sanitize your hands upon entry of the building and there will be temperature checks conducted at the front door. We still practice social distancing. Every other row uh, will be empty. When uh, during the offering time, the ushers will have the, the baskets. You just simply put it in. Uh, they're not gonna give you the basket. We just want everybody to be safe. Uh, uh, everyone will have a mask on uh, and there will be two chairs uh, that separate families that are on the same row. Only those ministering on stage during song service are not required to wear a mask at that time. You're more than welcome to wear one if you so choose. However, when that ministry is ended, and I ask uh, the song service team to, to take their seat, they will then don their mask throughout the service before taking their seat. When service is over, you will be required to leave the building immediately. And so far, we, we've had, when we were open before, we, we had no problem with that. God bless you for cooperating with us. This allows the ushers and the cleaning crew to disinfect the church. It is strongly suggested that if you decide to fellowship outside in the parking lot, that you continue to practice social distancing and wear your mask. Amen. Our desire is for people to come to church. Praise God. But what we really want is to pe for people to stay in church. We care more about your health than your convenience. Also, we understand that Galena Park has issued another curfew. And I will do my best to make sure you have enough time to get back home in a timely fashion. But I also need your cooperation with exiting the building up at the conclusion of these services. These are challenging times, but the Lord is with us. He will help us through this. And I ask as your pastor that you be a man or woman of prayer and dedication to the things of God. Furthermore, when it comes to evangelism, outreaches will be preserved only for Saturday mornings until further notice. Those of you who are healthy and have no symptoms can participate. We will gather at the church with our masks, grab our flyers, go to predetermined locations in which we will simply leave the flyers up on the doors. There is to be no direct contact with people until otherwise instructed. 
during the revival, these same regulations for our services will apply. God bless you. Thank you. So those are our announcements this morning. This morning we also want to receive the Lord's tithe and his offering glory to God. Amen. The Bible tells us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over what God caused man to give into your bosom. The word of God goes on to say that God loves a cheerful giver. You want God to love you? Hallelujah. Be a cheerful giver this morning. We do have a, a online giving available. You can go to our website, PasadenaCFM.com. Glory to God. Click on Give Online. Follow the instructions. Uh, praise God. You can also take this uh, same app and uh, download it onto your phone, whether it's iPhone or Android. Amen. And give that way. Glory to God. We want you to participate in what God is doing. Uh, we have an ongoing pledge for the Bible conference in Colleen, Texas, our very first Bible conference next year. Amen. April of 2021. Uh, and we as a congregation are going to raise $10,000 uh, specifically for that conference, for all that God wants to do with that conference in world evangelism. Amen. Uh, there is a conference section in the Tithely portal. Amen. You can give to that. This is above the tithe. This is above the offering. We encourage you to be a part of what God is doing. Amen. Uh, I believe Jesus said it best. Freely we've received, uh, so freely give. Amen. Amen. And so uh, let's let's give this morning. Uh, I, I want you to be a blessing. Let's be a blessing. I want to pray over the offering right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you. And I ask God that your hand will be upon the gift and the giver. Lord, that you open doors that no man can shut. And you close doors that no man can open. I pray release favor. God, release finances. God, open doors for jobs and resources by the grace of God. As your people are liberal, Lord Jesus, uh, we cut covenant with you, I pray. Father, that you would move in such a way that's unexplainable, God. I thank you for your mercy and your grace, God. Take up our gift, oh Lord Jesus. It's a worthy sacrifice. We praise you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And so, thank God this morning. We're going to get into the word of God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible with you, if you have your Bible with you, the book of Daniel, chapter 3. Thank God. Daniel, chapter 3. I get set up here. Hallelujah. Sermon I've entitled this morning, In to the Fire. Into the Fire. We're going to look at verse 7. Move on down to 27. I encourage you to just be patient with me as I go through the word of God. God's going to help us. Hallelujah. Into the Fire. The Bible tells us this morning in verse 7, so at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the horn, flute, harp, lyre, and symphony with all kinds of music, all the people, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. It's very interesting that this statement is made in the Bible nearly 4,000 years ago, and it sounds just like today. That when the people hear music, they fall down and worship the image. I'm prayerfully considering putting a sermon together called The Power of the Image and, and uh, how people have just been captivated by the images. We are dominated and we are directed by images, whether it's on our television, whether it's on our tablet, on our smartphone, any type of media outlet, 
we are controlled and dominated and captivated by the image. Of, and so it's very interesting that Daniel uh, writes here that when the people heard all kinds of music, they bowed down and they worshiped the image that the king had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and accused the Jews. They spoke to the king, saying, King, live forever. You made a decree that everyone who hears the sound of all kinds of music will fall down and worship the image. And whoever does not fall down and worship will be cast into a fiery furnace. This is also interesting. I said it last week and I'll say it again. We now live in a world where we can no longer agree to disagree. You either believe what the social media and the spirit of this age is promoting, or you are, if I could use the terminology this morning, cast into the fiery furnace. Verse 12 says, there are certain Jews whom you set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Then it gives their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah are their Hebrew names. These men have not paid due regard to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you set up. And can I tell you, the Potter's House of Christian Church of Pasadena will not serve the gods of this world. We will not bow down and worship the image that has been set up. The Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury. Amen. You want to make a lesbian mad? Disagree with her. You want to make a homosexual mad? Disagree with them. You want to make a Republican mad? Disagree with them. You want to make a Democrat mad? Disagree with them. You want to make a black person mad? Then tell them that all lives matter. He's in a rage and a fury. Commanded that these men be brought before him. He said, is it true that you will not bow down and worship? If you're ready, at the time you hear the music, fall down and worship the image that I have made. That I have made. But if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. Uh, and what God will deliver you from my hand? This is how cocky people are today. These three Hebrew boys, they answered, they said, you know what? We're not even going to go there. Amen. That, that's, that's modern terminology. They said, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that's the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand. But if not, that's a statement of victory. Let it be known, king, that we will not bow nor worship the gold image which you have set up. Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury and the expression on his face changed towards these boys. He spoke and commanded that they heat the furnace seven times hotter than usual. This is what emotion does. He commanded certain mighty men of valor to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the midst of the furnace. So they were bound by flammable material, coats, trousers, and turbans, and other garments cast into the furnace and because the king's command was urgent the men who took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego died in the flame see friend they're even willing to kill their own to prove a point verse 23 of our text says these three men fell down bound in the midst of the fiery furnace then King Nebuchadnezzar was amazed. He arose in haste and he spoke to the counselors. Did we not cast in, uh, in three men bound in the midst of the fire? And they said, true. He said, look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, unharmed, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and he said Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego servants of the most high God come out and come here these three came out of the midst of the fire the administration the council, the governors and counselors gathered together seeing these men whose bodies 
the fire had no power. Even the hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected. The smell of smoke and fire wasn't even on them. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask God that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray, God, to the best of my ability, I want to make an application. Father, that people could connect the dots and see what was happening then is happening now. Heavenly Father, I trust you and I hide behind the cross because I have no confidence in my flesh. Give me unction to preach this this morning. And I ask God for your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. This is no doubt one of the most popular stories in Scripture. And as I was discussing during the reading of the text, it's amazing how insanely relevant this story is to you and to me today. We can see similarities in compromise. We can see similarities in music. We can see similarities in punishment, coerced beliefs. Beloved, this is America. What I did not highlight that I choose to highlight now is the people of Chaldea. They said there's Jews that are causing trouble. Now watch this. The only Jews that defied the king's command of was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What happened to all the other Jews? I said that to say this. There are some people that serve God that refuse to bow down to the music. Unfortunately, that doesn't encompass the entire church. Amen. Not every church disagrees, amen, with the spirit of this age. Not every church is willing to stand up against the flood tide of this generation. Not every church is willing to stand when everybody is bowing. There are some churches, there are some ministers, there are people of God, when they hear the music, they bow down just like everybody else. And I want to call you out this morning. Where you at? Because there's two types of Christians. You're either running free or you're running scared. How you running? Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah are the three Hebrew boys who stood up against the flood tide of their generation and wicked authority. And you know, we can learn a lot from their bravery and, con and conviction. Uh, and many scholars believe these boys uh, were under the age of 17. God give us on fire, teenagers. Hallelujah. I want to consider with you what's happening in our society. Society has drawn a line. They've drawn a line in the sand. People by and large are fed up with the status quo. The, the antiquated notions of, of justice, of social harmony, of religious perspective, of even sexual preferences and education of, have been shaken up of, upside down and left that way. We no longer live in a world where people uh, can gather together in harmony even though we may have different perspectives of the late great Robbie Zacharias uh, said these powerful words. Uh, he said, everyone is equal, but their ideas are not. See, the world has drawn a line, friend. Listen to me, Christian. The world has drawn a line. See, you must agree with defunding the police. You have to agree with that or you're thrown in the fire. You must accept sexual exploitation of and gender confusion. If the boy don't want to be a boy, then you better help him be a girl. If the girl don't want to be a girl, then you better help him be a boy or you're not a good parent. You must agree with Black Lives Matter. Even though they're unwilling to forgive, there is no redemption at all. And the only time they lift their voice is when somebody from a different race harms our race. You must agree to hate President Trump. You have to hate this man, regardless of his character, regardless of what he's done, regardless of what he has not done. We must hate this man. I personally am no advocate of President Trump. I didn't vote for the man. But I will not disrespect the office. 
You must have the right to, to enter this country illegally without consequence. Only in America can you see someone say, I'm illegal and I know my rights. Take your hands off me. Only in America. It's harder to get into Africa than it is to get into the United States. And we wonder why we're the nation leading in COVID cases. You have to hate white people. Because if you don't like white people, uh, if, you, if you like white people, then you might as well be one of them. This is the world that we live in, beloved. The rival to Trump, Joe Biden told me that if I don't vote for him, I'm not even black. When they heard all kinds of music, the people bowed down and worshiped the golden image. But in our text, there's three men who refused to listen to the music. They refused to bow down with everyone else. Regardless of their circumstances, they were going to remain faithful to their God. And the same must be true for you and for me. Just because everybody else is moving to this rhythm doesn't mean we have to. Amen. Just because everybody else is doing it doesn't mean we do it. Amen. We live in a generation of morons. There should still be a hunger and thirst for righteousness. There's still a God in heaven who paid for our sins. There's still something to be said about truth and righteousness. Joshua said it best in Joshua 24, verse 15. He said, if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose for yourselves this day who you serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. They're drawing the line. I'm drawing the line. In fact, I drew the line first. We will not bow down. Come on. We will not excuse sin. We will stand for what is right. I don't care what you say or what you think. Hallelujah. It's just like the man that died. And the Bible says that Lazarus went to heaven and the rich man went to hell. And he has a conversation with Abraham. That means he knew who Abraham was. He knew about the Mosaic law. He knew about the things of God. And yet he ended up in hell. You know what that tells me? That everything he gave himself to was wrong. His prayers was wrong. His church attendance was wrong. Everything he did and said was wrong because he was lost. And everything that the poor little Lazarus did was right because the man made it to heaven. And I'm telling you, friend of mine, there's coming a day where right's going to be right and wrong is going to be wrong. Our text says Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said, O king, we need not to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. And if he is not, let it be known that we will not serve your gods or worship the gold image which you have set up. You know, I still believe in the dignity of the female. I still believe, amen, in marriage. I still believe, hallelujah, that fornicators will go to hell. I still believe that, beloved. I still believe that thieves and liars and hypocrites and crooks are not heroes. A true hero is someone who died on the battlefield protecting our country. What an insane world we live in. You come out of prison and everybody pats you on the back. You come out of university and people hate on you. What's wrong with us? People have drawn a line. Listen to me, church. It's time to draw our own line. And I realize as a child of God that this type of stand will not go without opposition. I realize that I put a target on my back the moment I lifted up the name of Jesus, and so did you. And you've got a choice to make, friend. Don't be like the children of Israel at the foot of Mount Carmel when Elijah called them out and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If God is God, then worship him. 
if Baal is God and worship him. And the Bible says uh, in 1 Kings 18, and the people said nothing. Uh, it's, 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 it's far too long, church, uh, for us to say nothing. It's far too long for us uh, to be silent. Well, you know, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. And, you know, we, 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 we just want. No, 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 no. Truth hurts, baby. Sometimes truth uh, will put a target on your back. It is what it is. Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24, verse 8 through 10, all these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations uh, for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. Ain't that the truth? And will betray one another and hate one another. Isn't that our world today? There have been schemes and plots against the church from the beginning. Keep the people of God separate. Give them a disease that forces distancing, even at the expense of killing other folks. Shut these churches down. But you can't shut us down, baby. Because the same technology you use to spew your lies is the same technology we use to get the gospel out. But I want you to know that they won't give up, church. It's always been an assault against Jesus Christ and his cause of salvation. These three men understood in our text what was at stake when they stood before Nebuchadnezzar. They knew it may cost them their lives and they prepared themselves for that day. See, friend, they were going through the fire again. This wasn't the first rodeo for them. You need to understand something. When, when Azariah, Mishael, amen, and Hananiah and Daniel, these three, these four Hebrew boys, when they were captured uh, by the Babylonians uh, and they were brought into the courts, uh, amen, they were made eunuchs, beloved. They had to be made eunuchs because they served in a palace uh, and most kings had harems uh, and he did not want his harems uh, to be disturbed by other men. So he made them eunuchs. He cut off their manhood. So they've already been through the fire. They've already come to a place in their life where they, their name will no longer live on. They can't have children. There's no posterity. There's no heritage for them other than their relationship with God. They've already been through the fire. There are Christians uh, inside the church. Uh, there are Christians that go to the potter's house. You've already been through the fire. You've already been through difficulties in life. Uh, and I'm here to encourage and I'm here to tell you, amen. Just like David said uh, in 1 Samuel, uh, the God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from this Philistine. Let me make that application. Uh, the God that delivered me from trials and tribulations last year, uh, the God that delivered me and helped me through my divorce, uh, the God that delivered me uh, and helped me through my sickness uh, is the same God that uh, uh, delivered me from this foolishness uh, that that's going on in the world today hallelujah you know if you think being a Christian is easy street you, you're mistaken we live in a day and age where people hate truth and will do anything and everything to snuff it out even if that means taking you out with it see our Bible says the king heated the furnace seven times hotter than normal you know things are about to heat up here in the next few months And as a child of God, you better be prayed up and you better be prepared to face the onslaught of hell. See, now is not the time to backslide. Now is not the time to play, play these games of back and forth with God. Now is it not the time to play confused. Uh, I know God is dealing with me. You ain't no deck of cards. God ain't dealing with you. Make, make up your mind. You better stand up. Uh, you better know your God. Because if you won't stand for God, you'll fall for anything. Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith upon the earth? When Jesus returns, he's not looking for good people. There's good people in hell. When Jesus returns, he said, will I find faith upon the earth? And he's coming back for those who are diligently seeking him and longing for his appearing. Church, we better be ready. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7 through 9 says, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Janice and Jambres resisted Moses. Uh, so do these uh, who resist the truth. Is that not our world today? Men of corrupt minds uh, disapproved concerning the faith, uh, but they will progress no further for their folly will be manifest to all, to all uh, 
as theirs also was. You know, a lot of times, uh, amen, I'm not going to get into no argument. Amen. I'm not going to argue with some fool. I'm not going to mix it up with you about doctrine and what you believe and your challenges. All I got to do is just sit around and wait for life to catch up to your foolishness. I believe the Bible says it best. Wisdom is justified of her children because we reap what we sow. You give yourself to the flesh, you'll reap of the flesh corruption. I don't care if you're saved or unsaved. The moment you sow seeds of corruption, the moment you sow seeds to the flesh, trust me, a crop is coming. And I don't need to argue with you. And I don't need to tell you I told you so. That's the Holy Ghost job. And church, I want to let you know they're coming. They're coming for us. And their target is our children. Between television and movies uh, and social media, our children are fed a steady diet of this baloney. And as a parent, it is our job to make sure our kids know right from wrong before you breed an enemy in your own house. People are insane uh, encouraging uh, their children uh, uh, to, to, to explore sexually. What in the world is a child under the age uh, of 18 need to do with any type of sexuality? Five, six years old. Mommy, I wish I was a girl. You better go sit down. But you got these knuckleheaded parents uh, who actually feed that. How ridiculous is that? This is the world we live in. People are just out of control. People are crazy. It's going to get hot, beloved. Know your God. Because we're going in the fire. If you notice the text this morning, God did not stop these three Hebrew boys from going in the fire. And God will not prevent us either. We're going into the fire. Verse 24 of our text, then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. When he rose in haste and spoke, saying, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Yes, he did. He threw them in the fire. But, but, but look at what the word of God says. He says, look, I see four men loose. They're no longer bound in the fire. Talk to me, somebody. Walking in the midst of the fire, they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Listen, when we make a stand for Jesus Christ, and although things may get hot, and we are thrown in the fire, can I tell you, church, that God is in the fire with us. Hallelujah. He will loose and break every chain. And the fire that was meant to consume us, and the fire that was meant to destroy us, we're just walking around in it. Hallelujah. We're just walking around. People are getting sick left and right. Uh, we're just walking around. People are confused and hurt uh, and broken. People have been violated uh, like the Floyd family. Uh, totally violated. People disrespected the badge. Uh, but God's people can walk around in the midst of that fire unhurt. But we got to make a stand. We got to see the big picture. We got to realize that the enemy is not another person. And that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God. What a powerful testimony in this story. When all seemed lost, when they were about to be destroyed, God did the unthinkable. He joined them. Listen to me, church. Uh, we need God to be with us. That's his name, Emmanuel God with us. Glory to God. He joined them in the fire. Can I tell you, friend, the Lord is with us in this thing. He's not on the outside unscathed. He's right in the midst of the flames of all the rebellion that's happening around us, all the persecution. He's right alongside of us, protecting us from the wrath of people's foolishness. When the king's army surrounded the house of Elisha, the servant was panicking. And Elisha prayed to God and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see that there's more with us than with them. And the moment he did that, God opened his eyes. And he saw chariots and armies of fire surrounding the entire city and the enemy. Listen to me, beloved. This is the God we serve. He is not going to deliver you out of your circumstances. He's going to walk through them with you. We don't serve a God of prevention. 
We serve a God of protection. Jesus is right there in the middle. Psalm 27, verse 1 through 3. The Lord is the light of my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of when the wicked came against me to eat my flesh, of my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Hallelujah. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war may rise against me. In this, I will be confident. In what? In the name of our Lord Jesus. And Jesus has a way of even making the heathen recognize who he is. Amen. It's not my job to convince cantankerous and difficult and rebellious people that our God reigns. God will do it all by himself. All I've got to do is take a stand. All I've got to do when I fall down in the middle of whatever fire they've prepared for us. Amen. Stand on the rock. Hallelujah. And God will show up. And God will show the heathen. And God will show the atheist. And God will show the homosexual. And God will show the lesbian. And God will show the racist who he is. There's coming a day when even the most criminal will acknowledge who the Lord is. The Word of God says they will all bow down. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Listen, our responsibility today, church, is you and I, we must be steadfast, immovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. Beloved, we cannot afford to compromise. We must stay the course set before us by God because staying the course and remaining steadfast in Jesus Christ, that guarantees our victory. You know, I haven't been a Christian for very long, only 29 years. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you that the same God that delivered me when I was a teenager is the same God that's still with me today. There's nothing special about me. I just made a decision. Friend, I'm challenging people this morning because Jesus is in the fire with us. But you have got to make a decision. You can't be like the other Jews that bowed down. I wonder if they tried to pull Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego down and say, come on, come on. It, 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 it doesn't mean anything. They just, you know, we don't want to upset anybody. Don't cause no trouble. Just, just, you know, just bow down. It's only for just a few seconds. Just for 10 seconds. You bow. Yeah, we know you don't believe in the golden image. We know that you don't believe in what they promote. We know, you know, uh, just come, just come to them. We, we know that you're not a homosexual, but you know, maybe your, maybe your brother, maybe your sister, maybe your aunt or your uncle is. Why don't you just, just grab a flag that it doesn't mean anything yes it does it's a statement it's an agenda friend i will not bow and i know the fire is coming i know the furnace is heated up but by my god i've prepared for that day and the god who delivered from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from this insanity and will deliver the church from this insanity. And even if he doesn't, let it be known today that we will not bow. We're not bow, friend. Oh, it's just one drink. Oh, it's just this and that. You don't have to go on. We just, we, we just need a designated driver. It's a statement. Rebellion, friend will ruin the child of God. It's time to take a stand, church. It's time to rise up and say enough is enough. It's time to rise up and say, you know what? I care about my kids. I care about their future. I care about the church. I care about my city because there's people that are hurting and that the only station, the only music, the only channel they have is the station with all kinds of music and golden images. The power of the image has consumed people. And people are beginning to eat the fruit of their own sinful choices. Uh, and it's up to the church to rise up. And if we don't rise up, if we're bowing next to them, how are they going to have any hope or any answers? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego changed nations that day by refusing to bow down. Realizing and recognizing 
by the grace of God that he was in the fire. Listen to me, friend. God is in this thing with you. God is in this thing. He will cover and protect the church. We must stand for what's right. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Hallelujah. We've got to stand for what's right. We've got to make decisions based on the word of God and what God says, not the flavor of the month. Can I tell you, friend, this virus, this political upheaval, this social injustice is just the beginning. Matthew 24 tells us it's the beginning of sorrows. Friend, sin is degenerative. Meaning it doesn't get better, it gets worse. There are things that happened last week that 10, 15 years ago would have been absolutely shocking and appalling. It's every day now. My mother told me that when she was a kid, she would watch Elvis on television and they would only show his waist up because they felt his dances moving his hips and his legs was unethical. Today, we not only see the waist down, but that's all we see because they ain't got no clothes on. The swimsuit issue of Sports Illustrated in the 1960s and 70s would have been ripped off of every shelf Today, they're in public stores for your kids to have access. Sin is degenerative, but beloved. Even when I was a kid, I remember girls in our schools would get pregnant and the, and the, and the parents, uh, uh, they'd go into hiding. We wouldn't even know. It's like they're in the witness protection program. We didn't even know because of the shame that was associated with fornication. Today, there's all kind of pregnant kids in school. They put jewelry in the belly button and don't even know who the father is. Sin is degenerative. And the church is asleep. Afraid to be thrown into the fire. Afraid to make a stand. But can I tell you, beloved, we are the only hope. If we don't stand for God, then who will? And God shows us that when things get hot, he's willing to join us in the fire and even cause the greatest heathen to recognize who he is. That's the God we serve, beloved. That is the God that we serve. And there are people, you're listening to me this morning and you're not saved. Can I tell you, friend, this is not the end. This is the beginning. One day you and I, we're going to stand before God. Listen to me. You're going to stand before God. I don't believe that. It doesn't matter. Just because you don't believe it doesn't mean it's, it's not true. You can suppress and you can, you can ignore all you want to. But one day, beloved, you and I, we're going to stand before a living God. And God's not going to ask you if you're good. Because if being good was enough, then there was no need for the cross. We're either born again or we're not. The word of God gives us promises. He whom the son sets free is free indeed. But friend, you've got to want to be free. you got to want to give your life to Jesus. You've got to see sin for what it really is. The consequences of your decisions, they're not going to go away. We must fall on our face before the Lord and make a decision to turn away from sin before it's too late. The Bible tells us that the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You know, whenever I quote that in 1 John, I realize the difficulty in that statement said he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sin. And how is it just to forgive us of our sin? Because we deserve to be punished for it. God changed the justice. 
Because he said, I'll pay for it. And if I've already paid for your sin, then you don't have to. And it's just to set you free. That's the Lord. That's the Lord God. Rich in mercy and abounding in love. And he doesn't want sin to destroy you. But you've got to put the music down. You've got to get up off your knees worshiping the golden image and make a decision. God, I'm with you. And I want to pray for you. Listen to me, backslider. It is high time to quit playing and come home. Your days are numbered, backslider. You need to make a decision. If you're not saved, you're backslidden. Right now, I want to pray. I want to pray right now. I want you to lift your voice. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm coming to you in prayer this morning. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. But Lord, I believe that you died for me. And I am willing to accept you inside my heart. Father, forgive me of my sin and be the Lord of my life. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Father, by the grace of God, I pray men and women all across this land who prayed that prayer, Father, that you'd seal it in your blood. Lord, that they would be able to stand in your name and as promised, God, your hand would be upon them and you would protect them. And Father, while we know that many times you will not circumvent our circumstance, but you promise to be with us in the fire. You promise to be with us. And I'm asking God, cover us in the blood. Father, as we stand against the flood tide of this generation, I pray your power, your dominion, and your victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, beloved, if you prayed this morning, we want to know about it. Please go to our website, PasadenaCFM.com, and I want you to click on the link down into a contact us link. Put in the information, let us know. Listen, God saves to the uttermost, but we've got to make a decision. Church, listen. We can learn a lot from these three Hebrew boys who refuse to bow down and worship. Will you join me today? Let's stand for righteousness. Let's stand for truth. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He sees each tear that falls and he hears me when I call. Come on, church, lift your hands with me. He knows my name. Oh, he knows my every thought. He sees each tear that falls. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you this morning, and I pray, God, that this word would sink down into the hearts of men and women. Father, church of Jesus Christ would rise undaunted and unashamed, as your Bible tells us in Romans. I am unashamed of the gospel of Christ. And I pray, Father, that we have the utmost confidence that you will be with us in the fire. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Remember, we have service tonight. At 6 o'clock, amen. Sermon I've entitled this evening, I am a survivor. God bless you.